This material is coming from section 4.3, and it is on acid-base reactions. We're going to just touch very briefly on acid-base reactions. We study them with a lot of detail in the, in the spring quarter. And in the first quarter, we just do a basic introduction to them, just some really simple definitions, and then we come back to it in the spring with a whole lot more detail. What we're going to do in this section is define two different types of acids. Back in the day, chemists defined acids and bases based on their taste. They identified acids as being substances that tasted really sour, Things like lemon juice, orange juice, grapefruit juice, those all have acids in them, citrus acid. Also, your stomach acid, when you throw up, that really sour taste that you get into your mouth, that was defined as an acid. And bases were substance that they, substances that they defined as having a bitter taste and leaving a slippery feeling on your skin. So probably a lot of you have touched bleach water if you've worked in health industry or food service industry. You've gotten bleach water on your hands, and so you know that slippery, icky feeling that you get on your skin. Or if you've used cleaning products at home that have a lot of bleach in them, you've probably had bleach on your skin at one time or another, so you know how it feels. And bases uh, taste very bitter. We don't eat a lot of bases. We don't taste a lot of bases every day, but if you ever have had soap in your mouth or shampoo in your mouth, or like my mom used to put soap in my mouth, that... Um, that bitter, yucky taste is the taste of a base. It didn't take chemists very long to figure out that they should stop putting the molecules in their mouth, and so they started to come up with definitions for things that didn't uh, require them to eat chemicals and die. The Arrhenius acid was the first definition of an acid following the taste test. Acids by the Arrhenius method were defined as ones that dissociate in water to produce hydrogen ions. And so for example, HCl, hydrochloric acid, when you put it in water, and they were not looking at this as reacting with water, we'll learn later that it does, but they were just looking at it going into water, and HCl would split up and make H plus ions and Cl minus ions. Or another example, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, when you put it into water, it splits up to make H plus ions and hydrogen sulfate, HSO4 minus ions. Now, in the third quarter, we'll talk about why it just breaks one H plus off and not both of them, why this stays intact. But in this quarter, we're not going to get into it. So that was the definition of an acid and the Arrhenius definition of a base was very similar. It was defined as a substance that dissociated in water to produce hydroxide ions, OH-. For example, Potassium hydroxide, KOH, when you drop it into water, you get potassium ions and hydroxide ions. Producing the OH uh, hydroxide ion, that characterizes it as a base. So Arrhenius said if it produces H+, it's an acid. If it produces OH-, it's a base. And this definition worked fine until they started finding substances like ammonia, which they knew was a base just based on the taste test and the slippery feeling that it gets on your skin. And if you drop ammonia into water, this ammonia is not an ionic compound like KOH. You can't see how to separate its cation and its anion because there aren't any cations or anions. And because you can't dissociate the ammonia ion, the ammonium molecule, ammonia molecule, because it cannot be dissociated, because it is not made of cations and anions, it can't be defined under the Arrhenius method as a base.
And when they started encountering more and more examples like this, they decided that they needed to have another way of identifying or classifying acids and bases, which was the Bronsted-Lowry method. And I'm going to put that on a separate video so that um, we don't run into the 10-minute time limit of YouTube. <laughs>